what's up sub fans around the world and welcome back to another video so we are back in the garage and we are continuing the build of the new engine on the rear wheel driven sub 95 but in today's video we will go through what is most important to think about when it comes to oil pressure and how to set up your engine what to look for if you have like an oil pressure issue which i have had on uh, several engines right now so we will start from the bottom and we will go to the top so with me today to demonstrate this i have my new block that i have gotten so a new t5 block and i still have the balance shaft still installed so i will talk about those a little bit more uh, going forward in the video and i have a printout from Sobwiz online which is a great place to source your information so this is the the sub workshop instructions online so everybody could get to this sobwizonline.com fantastic site if you have problems with your engine or whatever or looking for information so starting with the oiling process on the engine of course it starts in the pickup so you need to have a clean pickup this could cause a lot of different issues they could be whining they could be low oil pressure you can can have a flashing engine light if the the pickup is clogged up so this is where it starts. It will pick up oil that will go up to the oil pump. So the oil pump is the next part, which is very important to have in good condition. It shouldn't be any deep scratches. So the oil pump then transports the oil out to the oil filter housing. And in the oil filter housing, there is a thermostat. I think it opens around 80 degrees Celsius or something like that. So when the engine starts cold, the oil will be pumped up here. It will be returned straight away into the engine. It will go through this cross pipe, then delivers up through the engine block. And then it will be sourced out from the or the oil pressure will go out to all of the crank bearings and from the first and the third crank bearing it will deliver oil up to the balance shafts which you can see right here and these two lines going up here and then we have a line that goes up into the cylinder head as well which will charge all of the cams and the lifters and everything with oil pressure so that is the basic setup and when the oil reaches a temperature of above 80 celsius or something like that instead of just going this short route the oil will go out to the oil cooler cool down a little bit then be transported back into the engine block again and the oil will drip down into the oil pan and then it will be picked up once again and then we have a full circle of motion so there is quite a few things to think about when you do this uh, so most people if we start from the bottom you have an oil pan so your oil pan will probably look something like this it's pretty important to service it and to thoroughly clean it once and in a while so this is a pan that i took off from an old engine so i have done nothing to it but if i would have removed this oil pickup it will probably be pretty clogged up i would say and this is the oil pan for my rear wheel drive build since the engine is sitting the other way and i don't have much space underneath so that is a different story but it starts right here so you need to have a pickup that is clean and you have to have fresh o-rings in the pickup 
So when you start the engine, you should get oil pressure immediately because the, the oil pump starts to spin as it sits on the crank. And then it pushes the oil into the block. So the first important thing is this crossover. This is also very important to have new O-rings that really seal up because this is the first place after the oil pump where you could drop oil pressure if you have a leak or if it's sucking air or whatever. Next up, it will pump the oil up into the crank and deliver the oil out to the bearings and up to the balance shafts. So what a lot of people do is they remove the balance shafts which I have done on my engine that's in the car right now. Of course it's nothing you will see. But what you do then is you remove the these you remove the chain of course but then you remove this whole axle just pull it out and you insert sleeves that will cover up the oil feed so the oil feed will go through the crank pump up oil and when it comes to this seal off area it will just stop and the same goes for this direction right here it will pump up the oil and then just stop so I have seen a video and it's phenomenal. I'm going to do the same. And it's from Jason Rochester. I hope I pronounced that right. Fantastic YouTube channel with great content, great tips. Uh, so this is something that I will do for my engine right now. So we will flip this block over. But before we do that, when you delete the balance shaft, you also need to thread up this hole right here and insert like an M6 bolt and a cover plate over this because this is the tensioner for the balance shaft. So you want to cover this up as well so you don't have any oil leaks out here. And from the top, this is the hole where the oil pressure goes up. Uh, into the head so this is the only way it goes up all these other channels are for coolant so I'm going to flip this block over and we will look because right now in the first engine I deleted the balance shaft I took them out in this engine I will leave them in because they don't do any harm the they will only sit there and the oil will just stop when it comes to them because usually they want to be lubed up but since there isn't no chain on them they will not spin so they will just be a immediate stop so with the block flipped over you will see in the first Bearing, you will have two oil channels going out right here. One that's going up to this balance shaft and one that goes up to this balance shaft. But this channel right here also feeds the head. So you cannot block this off, then it will be a disaster immediately. But what Jason did was he threaded in a, a stop, a, a threaded call it like a threaded bolt m6 is is too small for this so it needs to be like an m7 but you can thread in this like stop nut right here so just make sure it doesn't go up above then it will cancel the oil feed straight away so when the engine is picking up and you get sucked in and the oil and it's going to be pushed out to the bearings it will immediately stop right here and not have to transport oil up here where it doesn't do any good and there can also be air pockets in this uh, oil feed right here so if we block it off right here you will gain a little bit of oil pressure and 
the oil doesn't have to travel back and forth all the time so this will be the focus hole and the same goes for this one in the middle so we will block this off also and this will of course be left open so then we will have the oil feeds for each crank bearing going through the entire crank so that is the first step then we have that blocked off so this side will be completely blocked off this will have the oil travel because we need to have the oil feed for the head and also oil feed for the the oil jet or oil nozzles that will help to spray the cylinder walls when the when the piston and rods are going up and down and these nozzles right here is a very common thing that tend to fail and will immediately lower your oil pressure because when you have started the engine here we have two of them this one is from a T5 machine also known as sub 9000 early sub 93s 900s so this was the ones that were using the trionic 5 system and this is for a newer like sub 95 sub 93 which have the trionic 7 system they work in the same way the design is just a tiny bit different so inside each of these nozzles you will have a, a nut in the in the end you will have this threaded part right here inside there you will have a little ball and a spring and this spring is loaded underneath the ball and you have a hole that pushes the oil out through the nozzle and sprays it out and this ball is designed to be engaged and open at like 1.4 bar or around 20 psi and this ball could get stuck inside of this little screw right here so make sure you really have this working by just pushing something into it make sure it bounces up and down really freely and then just make sure it gets lubed up before you install it in the car because if this doesn't go up and down then you could have an oil leak all the time and that is of course no good then you will have like zero oil pressure when you are idling when you push the throttle the the oil pressure will go up but it will be leaking so jason also showed a great way to see in the car when you have the engine inside of the car and you want to check if this works or not you could do like this so when you're laying underneath the car you have the block right here you have this piping that goes straight over the block you could just remove this from the block put this side up into the block right here and then you could just of course you need to, to clean it out a little bit first but then you could just blow into this one and you can hear that it's leaking and usually of course in this engine my my crank bearings are blown in the middle so they are leaking but this is a good way to feel if your nozzles are stuck and if they are leaking as well so this is a great tip to know if there is a leak underneath your car so very good tip thank you Jason for that so I think that summarize the whole oil problematic around the engine on basically a lot of the subs and this is of course very crucial to get it right and this is it's easy as I showed you right now to see if it's leaking but 
if you find any of the nozzles that's leaking, you could just hope and pray that it's not the fourth one that is closest to the gearbox. Because when the crank is inside of the engine, you will not be able to get to this one. All of these three you could change, but not this one. This is an engine out job to be able to remove this one. So in the engine that I have in the car right now, I have T7 nozzles that are working in the first, second and third. And I think it's a non-working in the fourth one. So right now, when I reinstall everything in this engine, I have got a brand new crank from Maptune Performance. This is factory new. So I, I keep it covered up a little bit to protect it. But this will be, I will block off this as I said. So we will not have an oil feed up to this where it doesn't have to be. I, I have cleaned off the block, I have painted it, I painted it gold this time because gold is the winning color. I have gold on a lot of other stuff on the car. So I'm just throwing out into the universe that we will be winning this time. So no more <laughs> breaking down the engines I hope. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And I hope I got everything right and got everything into this video, which is important to, to know. And one important thing is also to use the correct oil for the engine. Don't go with crazy thick oils because it will just end up in disaster sooner or later. So go with what the manufacturers suggest and stuff will work hopefully so if you have anything to add please comment down below otherwise i will see you in the next one bye